Uh, hey everyone, this is Justin Hillgrove with Imps and Monsters, and with me is Nolan Lee, Punching Pandas, and uh, Nolan's just visiting the studio today, so I uh, thought I'd trick him into doing an interview with me. Oh, so what this is? <laughs> yeah, surprise! Um, so tell me a little bit about your, I already know a little bit about yourself, but tell these guys a little bit about yourself uh, and your, I guess, where you're at artistically. Well, my name is Nolan Wheat, and I'm originally from Portland, Oregon, and had grown up drawing all my life, and I wanted to continue pursuing that, but then at, when I finally came to college and high school, I decided, um, you know, my, it might be better if I get something a little bit more stable and a little bit more practical, so I went into engineering, but then in about, after I graduated and got my master's and structural engineering and I moved up to the Seattle area to get a job and I had worked there for a couple years before I decided at some point I, I wanted to switch back to art and it was at that time where I felt like if I don't do anything now then it's going to be something I'm going to regret later like 10 to 15 years down the road and so I decided to start making that transition and ended up uh, kind of getting myself into a little bit of a but long story short, getting myself in a little bit of trouble with, uh, you know, the whole recession, and so it was during that time I I started, you know, learning like really drawing a lot more and really getting my volume up, and uh, around that time I I came across uh, some mentors who helped me and uh, guys who have worked in video games and worked as children's authors and. They really helped me out in terms of getting my skill level up to a point. And, but even then, in about 2014, it didn't feel like I was really, I was really as confident in my skill level. Um, I had gotten a couple of jobs at some startups where I had learned to cut my teeth and, and really learn how to design and really how to learn how to work with people. And, and then in 2014, that's when I went independent and, and decided to get you know, try out the, what's it like being an independent creator. Right. So. And so as an independent creator, what kind of what kind of stuff do you do? How would you describe it? It's all pandas. It's all pandas. It's all pandas wearing boxing gloves. When you were saying that, it reminded me of like, when I was in high school. I, I initially I was I was like, oh, I want to be an animator. I want to just draw stuff, and that was that was going to be my job. But as I got closer to being a senior, I started to panic. And then when I was looking at community college, because you know that's what I could do, um, I I was thinking more graphic design, mm -hmm. just because oh, I, I can get a job. It's almost like I I went well, my dream's too hard. Let's do something else. You know that's. Yeah. Um, and I, I was kind of wondering, like, what, you know, what, what, what would have happened if I'd just gone for it? Mm -hmm. I'm perfectly happy where I'm at right now, obviously, but yeah. um, but at the same time, it's like you have this tendency when when uh, reality is about to hit to just go, oh no, yeah. um, I better do something that I know will work. So I always love it when I hear about people that um, you know are really just going for it. Yeah, it, I actually was going to get into animation mm -hmm. and. Part of me is still on the fence about that, but I think now that I'm older, and you know, if I go, if I go into animation now, I'm one of the older guys, which feels weird. But I think um, having been a little bit outside of that art world before jumping in, um, it's kind of formulated some of my tastes and, and preferences in terms of like what I want for myself as an artist. And uh, to answer your early question about where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm still, I'm mainly focused in illustration, but then I'm also wanting to uh, develop more narrative-based and more story-based content, which is, is like exercising a different part of my brain that I'm still struggling with right now, um, right. just trying to get um, like story beats and like trying to set up the map of 
where I wanted to go from point A to point B, and being able to take someone on that journey and have them still be interested in, in it after investing so much time reading or, or uh, looking at my material. Right. And and so with the going back though to animation, it's you know it it's the most it's such an easy draw because uh, for lack of a pun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's because it's like it's your drawings coming to life. You know, it's so colorful. There's music. There's noise. You know, uh, excellent craftsmanship. But then, it's what I've come to learn after just going through this art journey. It's like art is kind of like any other job, and it's like there's, you know, for big productions and big uh, projects, you know, those require a lot of man hours and a lot of uh, a lot of people to help get this thing from concept to uh, finished product. And it's like, in, in me being in the animation world would be like, um, I'd be a small cog in this big machine to be, you know, it's kind of cliche, but uh, I have to ask myself, I had to ask, ask myself like, what is it that I really wanted to do? Like, do I want to draw the same drawing over for, you know, 24 frames a second? Right. And like, you know, do I want to be in betweener to, you know, and working on, I'm, I'm sure, I would learn a lot, I would get a lot out of it, I would make some great relationships, but then I also value the the creating new material, you know, putting something out in the world where it's something new and not necessarily like um, something drastically different than what's being on, on the norm um, or the mainstream. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and we were talking a little bit right before this, right before I turned on the camera about it. You, you mentioned <laughs> there's a baby off scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, we were talking a little bit about about how it really is a business, you know, um, mm -hmm. being an artist, and whether you're like you were saying, uh, being a cog in a machine, or whether you're doing it yourself. Um, if you are doing it yourself, there is a lot of business, I guess, um, involved. Yeah. Uh, now you you do it pretty much. Uh, is it part time for you right now, or it's part time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, since I've had my kid, it's you know that has taken priority in my life in terms of the number of hours I spend during the day, obviously, and uh, you know just because it just it just made sense in terms of like the cost of daycare, the you know, and also my priorities of. Uh, wanting to spend time with my, my son because this is such, you know, it's already been almost a year and it's gone by so fast. And and having a kid has just really shaped the way, it's really resha reshaped how I think about like the world. And the world. It's kind of cheesy, but, um, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me like that feeling when the baby comes out, you know, and you get to see your kid for the first time, they, they say it's amazing, but... Even that doesn't really describe me. It didn't really prepare me for the feeling that I would have. And it, it's, it's hard for me to even describe what that feels like. And yeah. that depth of love is just, has kind of just changed the way, you know, my priorities in terms of, you know, how do I want to spend my time? How do I, you know, do I want to, do I go to this show because it's a weekend away from my family? Or do I, you know, do I do right. this because it's going to take me time to work on it to, you know. And so... It definitely makes you prioritize things a lot more. <laughs> no, I, I agree. Well, and it, it does. It affects your. At least for me, it affected my style. Yeah. Um, and there are, you know, there was shows I was going to where I, I'd be gone for like two weeks, and that's wow. um, that's that's rough. <laughs> I mean, it's a trade-off though because I'm I'm home, you know, during the week, and then I, I'll usually be at shows on the weekend or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it is a. Uh, it's all about how much time you can spend with your family and keeping priorities and balance and all that. Yeah. Um, so is there, you, you have a very um, specific style. Um, it's, it's great. Uh, how did you kind of land on that? I, oh, that's a good point. Well, I was thinking, let me think about this. I think when I started drawing, I, I, I learned a lot from, uh, some of my mentors, who some of who gone to art center, and you know they would. When I got into art, I was drawing, doing a lot, copying a lot of the uh, Nomen um, tutorials. You know, this is how you draw a spaceship, or this is how you do concept design, and a lot of it was 
you know, kind of geared towards the hyper realism, which is which is fine. Um, but then over time, I once I started to get into social media and like Instagram and such, I I noticed uh, a lot of I got connected with a lot of animation artists. Um, but the thing that was you know even even still like it's stylized, but there's still a little bit of realism that's added to it. Well, I noticed but, your your backgrounds are like they're like spot on. They they <laughs> they look real, but they still have a kind of the soft animation edge to it. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Yeah. I was like, they don't necessarily look realistic. To me. <laughs> I oh think... well, no, they they're <laughs> they're great, which people will see if they check out the yeah. uh, website. So. Bunchypandas.com. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's part of. I've had to think about that because I feel like there's times when there's times when I wanted to make something like super hyper realistic, but then I realized that it's taking me like forever to draw this thing. And so uh, one of the things that I always struggle with is trying to simplify something. And you know, like I had one piece where it was from the the Chronicles of Narnia, and, and I had. This uh, the camera set low, and so like you're looking up through the trees, and so you see like leaves and stuff. And I was like, I was trying to paint it, and I was like, man, this is taking me way too long to draw all these leaves. Like, is there a way I can like simplify it? And, and you know, I, I did that in Photoshop, and it was you know, of course, you could create wet brushes, so it does help the process. Right. But then I did another scene, another watercolor painting where. Um, it was for the scene, it was for the movie uh, Stand By Me. And the scene where the four boys kind of come across the body at the end. Not really oh, spoilers. Spoiler. Yeah. Not really spoilers. <laughs> They're looking for a body, so they, you, know, you know there's going to be a body. Yeah. Um, but uh, even then, it's like, oh, there's a ton of leaves out here. So I, you know, how do I paint the leaves? And how do I, not to be lazy, but it's, I know that whenever I put in too much detail into something, it, it kind of, the whole piece kind of just ends up, you know, getting too distracting. Right. You know, I'm looking around at some of your backgrounds, and it kind of follows the same logic, though, where it's like, you don't need necessarily need to, you just need, need to make it feel like it's something, you know. It's, right. You know, a tree doesn't have to be drawn super realistically. Like, you could draw literally uh, a, a stick with a couple other sticks po pointing out and point little, put little green circles, and it's, you know, that's a tree, right? And I think it's more like, <laughs> What I've gotten to, um, what I've gotten to be more cognizant of is, you know, just suggest something. You know, you don't necessarily have to like explicitly put it there. Um, but if I, you know, if I were to work at a, you know, uh, a triple A type title game, you know, obviously, yeah, you have to put in the work to make it to match the quality, or to match the expectations of what they want. You know, right. They want this tree to look as like you're when there. You're, when right? you're doing it for yourself, there's a certain conservation of of energy and sanity. Yeah. <laughs> but that's part of it too, where I, you know, because I, I have a kid, because like my time is so limited, it's like I don't have time to paint all this stuff. So right. it's, it's also just being able to complete what, uh, trying to finish what I can in the parameters that are given to me. And so with, right. and that's how some of my stuff ends up being stylized, where, you know, it's also an economy of time. But I also like drawing really cool shapes. You know, I like, I'm becoming more, um, enamored with just like creating these interesting shapes and yeah. and yeah so well and why why pandas why why not <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any good reason exactly so they right. well um, yeah, I was just curious. at least for the name punching pandas it, it arrived when I when I made my website for my art uh, this is back I think in 2006 and they uh, I had to create a blog for it and I just need a title for the blog. So I had these stuffed pandas that were next to my desk, so I, I just thought it would just sound funny to say punchy pandas. Yeah. And the actual, it stayed that way for a while, so it just was my art blog, and there wasn't really any pandas on the on, on there until someone asked me, like, hey, you should draw pandas, right? And I, uh, and I was like, punchy pandas, yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> uh, it was funny, though, like, the, the character, if you look at the character now, he looks like a a basketball with a black and white and red basketball, but then um, back then he had a little bit more form and anatomy to him. Yeah. And then over time he just kind of just shrunk into a marshmallow. <laughs> and uh, it it's kind of been like uh, at least the concept of it when I thought about 
hunky pandas. I just thought it'd be really funny just to imagine this little giant room full of pandas just you know punching each other, and then the sound of it would just be you know like a giant pillow fight because they're all chubby and fluffy. And, yeah. So that's the story behind Punchy Pandas. Well, and you have a piece on on your website where it's just like a street full, of just yeah. a giant panda brawl, which I love. That. Urban brawl. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So, uh, all right, and if uh, someone wants to find out more about you, uh, you mentioned your website. Um, what's your? Uh, do you do um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, anything like that? Or? Pretty much, if you look at Punchy Pandas, uh, I'm pretty much on most platforms. On uh, you can look for Punchy Pandas on. On Instagram, Twitter, DeviantArt, um, Tumblr, uh, now Vivo, or no, no yeah, or is it Vivo? I actually or, forgot I had a or one of, account. Yeah. Or Verve, or something like that. <laughs> it's probably updated. Uh, YouTube, I'm also on there too. I'm trying okay. to get my channel up and running. Or you can also look for nolanlee.com, N-O-L-E-N-L-E-E. Yeah. Not N-O-L-A-N, because there's actually another artist named Oh, okay. Which you should, you should go check out this stuff too. He's, he's a cool guy. <laughs> All right, and then just uh, uh, for closing, do you, do you have any advice or um, or anything for people maybe that are aspiring artists? Or... Mm. I say just talk, you know, talk to people who've done it before, you know, who are more advanced than you, and you'd be surprised how many of them would uh, reciproc- uh, reciprocate and, and answer your questions and answer your emails. Um, I get emails about you know, what I do, and it takes me, like, forever to get back to them. So don't ever feel like if you send something out to someone that, and you don't hear anything for a while, that they just, they just hate you, or they yeah, like you. Yeah, no, it, it, sometimes it takes a while. I get, I get a lot of that, too, but artists, I've found, especially up where we are, we're in the Pacific Northwest, uh, artists are super nice. Yeah. They, you ask them questions, and they've been helped by other people, and they're happy to help you as well. So it's a, it's a very open uh, group. Yeah, it's and everybody's just normal people too. It's oh yeah. Like a lot of times, I feel like when I was talking to the Disney artists at first, when I was approaching them, I thought, "Oh my gosh, they're working at Disney, right?" Right. But you chat with them for. A while. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumb up and subscribe to our channel. Click the bell icon to receive notifications when we upload new videos. If there's anything that you'd like to see Justin and I cover in a future video, please leave a comment in the section below. We'll see you next time.